Take precepts, stay diligent. Uh, the boss, I build this army, so now we militant. Uh, militant. Yeah, I was shy, coming like a thief in the night. Nice. You gotta stay woke, gotta watch vigilant. Yourself. Man, brothers, we're doing some mighty teaching today, man. So edification it went out. You know, people want to listen, then they want to start scoffing. Everybody claim they know God, man, but it, it proves day in, day out, man. This word don't lie, and, and we realize that blacks and Spanish and Native Americans don't know a damn thing about the Bible. They don't know a damn thing about the Lord, but they caught up in their own pride, and it's gonna lead them to destruction, man. Give me the book, uh, Second Timothy. Uh, chapter 3 and verse 16 and give me uh, 2 Corinthians 13 11 and we gotta knock down these strongholds man right. we're gonna kick this thing off and give all praises to the most high God Yahweh by Hashem of Mashiach come and lock you out with try to bring that out Book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's what? It's given by inspiration of God. No, we just come up with what we all say. It's given by inspiration of God. No, but we just go by what the pastor say. He won't lead us astray, right? And it's given by the inspiration of God. So, so we got all our inspiration from the word, man. Right. We we going off man's vain opinions, man. And and, and man is going to lead you to the pit along with him, man. Because your pastor, only thing you going to want to do is dip you in some damn sugar water. And you're going to come up a flaming faggot still in sin, man. Bring it out. <laughs> it is <laughs> <laughs> it is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. For what? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction. I said this doctrine is made to uh, reprove you and give you correction, man. To show you where you've been going on. You ain't gonna go to your parents with this folly, so why you gonna bring it to the Lord? You ain't gonna go to your boss with this madness, so why you gonna bring it to the Lord, man? Uh, for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and in righteousness. I said for instruction and in righteousness. Where everybody go, oh, that uh, some, a man wrote that book. Well, a man also wrote the damn driver's manual, but you ain't got your permit. You ain't got your license. A man wrote the math book, but guess what? You know how to add. You know how to do uh, division. I was like, your brothers up here talking about they five percenters. Don't know what's going on. Where you get that from? A damn book. <laughs> then you then you read the script. Then you read the uh, the uh, the uh, manual when you first got your job. When they told you how to do everything, you learn everything from a book. Somebody had to write something down, man. But when you got it from the words of the Lord, and then we got precepts to back it up, that it was man moved by the Holy Spirit. Why wouldn't you believe him, man? See, these words were written for our learning, man. But Jake don't care, man. They want to be stiff necked. They want to be rebellious. They just gonna get led to destruction, man. Go ahead, bring it up. The Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, verse eleven. Look it out. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Do what? Be of good comfort. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. I say then the Christians always be like, man, we we can't be perfect. But then they say you can do all things to Christ. A double-minded man. It, Yeah, double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, man. You can't say that you can't be perfect, but then say you can do all things to Christ. It don't make any sense, man. What you got? Second Timothy chapter three and verse seventeen. So I'm going to start at 16 again. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect. That who? That the man of God may be perfect. No, everybody. That the man of God may be perfect. No, only the bishop. That the man of God may be perfect. Only the deacon. That the man of God may be perfect. Man, we all supposed to be men of the Lord, man. You keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, which most people don't, honestly. Yeah, then you would know that you're a man of God, man. That you're standing on the words of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That you're standing fast on these things. That you're being unmovable, man. But the world don't know nothing about that. And then they stiff neck and rebellious and want to act like they don't hear it. Or like they don't read it. And just be, oh, I, I know God. You don't know God. Because when you bring it out, that you, uh, the only way you know God is if you keep His commandments. Only way you love God is that you keep His commandments. But what can you combat that with? Oh, it's Mardi Gras. No, man, you're dealing with a damn spirit, man.
people are out here afraid to break their damn beads because they rather want to them just chase what the white man giving them, man. It's madness. Bring it up. Be of good. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a and holy kiss. I say, man, then that's how we supposed to treat our brothers. But they know that if they read the law, statutes, and commandments, if they read the curses, then they will understand that there's a reason that they hate their brothers. Or a reason that they that they don't want to listen to their brothers when they're on the street. Try to pass somebody a flyer and they get the damn shaking and twitch. They don't even know how to respond, man. The fact you just try to be nice to our people, they lost. They destroyed, man. Bring that out of Mark. The book of Mark, chapter 1 and verse 17. Yo. Yeah, how much I said unto them, come ye after me. Hey, brother, you got two minutes of the word? Two minutes. Uh -oh, come swear. on, man, let me Real get two quick, verses. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Book of Mark, chapter 1, and verse 17. And yeah, how much I said unto them, come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And that's what the Lord is doing, man. When you read the word, you realize that you got to become a fisher of men. you got to come out here and put in your work, man, to try to wake up the lost tribes, man, to try to bid Jacob back together, to get damn, uh, to get the blacks and browns to stop fucking gangbanging against each other, man, Just to, uh, to stop going against each other. We number one and number two in the prison houses, but yet we want to want to disagree with each other, want to claim that we're not brothers. You got people out here even to read the Bible and be like, oh, no, we, we Negro only. No, we, we Old Testament only. It's people that only read the Apocrypha, man. It's madness. They don't know what's going on. You can't fish men when you ain't got no bait to fish them with, man. Bring that out. The book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 3. Yeah. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom... Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. I was like, and if you know the Lord, you know that just because he says a number doesn't mean that it's literally only seven men. Seven is a number of completion. So the Lord wants us to be out here fishing, trying to get brothers that's on one accord, trying to get brothers that's on one mind, that's about their father business, man. Go ahead. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. And that's what the Lord is doing, man. He's making us the head of his business. This is an operation, man. And it, this ain't this ain't like the plantation that you go to every day where we only hear eight hours a day. Man, this grind don't stop, man. We go, wake, we got to wake up and think about the Lord. We got to go to sleep thinking about the Lord. Because the Lord can take you out while you're in your sleep, man. Just like that, you get taken up out the scene. You, gotta, you wake up in the middle of the night because you got cold sweats and have wicked dreams. That's because of spirits, man. You got to wake up and rebuke that, man. You got to be like, uh, be like a Howard shot. Tell that damn, uh, tell Satan to get behind you, man. Bring that on first drink. Six and four. Six and four. Look, uh, first Corinthians chapter six and verse four. Oh. If then he have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Well, we ain't supposed to judge. Set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I said, and we talking to the lowly, the meek, the ones who need salvation, the ones that need healing, the ones that are out here on in captivity, man, the ones that are strung out on drugs, the ones who don't have a heritage. And when you ask people, hey man, what are you? I'm black. They were like, but your jacket black. And look at your skin. And they, they confound it. About the most simple question. They don't even realize that that's a damn color in a crayon box, man. That's madness. Keep going. God, verse verse five. I speak to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother, go to law with brother. Do what? But brother, go to law with brother. Now nah, we just gonna uh, hate each other for the rest of our lives. But brother, go to law with brother. I say that's how we dispute stuff. Hey brother, you got two minutes of the word. Man, we trying to get you that daily bread, man. Get you a cup of living water, man. But brother, go to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. 
I said, and that's what we're supposed to do in front of the people that don't believe. That's how we alight unto the rest of the world. It's by living these all statutes and commandments. When that light shine, the heathens gonna see it, man. And we ain't talking about just the heathens that's in all these other nations, because our people want to be heathens too. They want to walk hand in hand with their oppressor. They want to do everything that their oppressors do. That's the reason that they walk around with no clothes on, while it's cold as hell, trying to get some damn beads. Bring that out. <laughs> Book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Come on! Or the 5, therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. I said, and these are a bunch of things that the most I say you got to cleanse yourself from. This is how you be perfect. You got to rid all the, all the weakness out of your life, man. All the folly and madness that you get from there watching BET, you know, watching uh, Tyler Perry movies. Hey, brother. Y'all got two minutes of the word? Come on, man. Y'all ain't about to do nothing important, man. Y'all got two minutes of the word. Brother, walk in the middle of the street, being damn near hit by a car, and hear the word of the Lord. That's crazy. Start that over again. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. What does the brothers got to do? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. What do all these people walking up and down Washington on a Saturday night got to do? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which which is idolatry. I say all those things are idolatry, man. Because it's all spirits. It's just madness that you got caught up in your mind that you think is reality, that you think is life, the things that you look up to. But all these things are gonna get destroyed, man. There is no reason to want to follow after the ways of the world. There's no reason to want the riches of this world because these riches profit nothing, man. You got that? The book of Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A what? A, a blessing, blessing and a curse. curse. That's good and evil, man. Keep going. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. And that's our people, man. They chasing after white Jesus, even though they know it or not. Hey, sisters, who, who is this on this side right here? Sister, sister. See that? Our people hate each other, man. If they knew the laws and statutes and commandments, they would be in the house. Being keepers of home, man. But it said they'd rather walk around with no clothes on. They'd rather be just looking for something to get into for the night. That's madness, man. Now people insulting each other and they think it's cool. That's off, man. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 8. Bring it out. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And with them, the blind and the lame. The woman with the child and her that travaileth with her with child together. A great company shall return thither. Verse 16. Thus said the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thy eyes from tears. For thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. For what? For thy work shall be rewarded, for, saith the Lord. Say, how would your work be rewarded if only thing you think about is smoking weed? Popping women, robbing people, hating your brother in his heart, man. Yeah, scamming, walking around drunk. That's madness, man. Keep going on that. And they shall come, uh, Shlaki, and they shall come again from the land of the enemy. And there is hope in thine end, said the Lord. Say, so there is hope in our end, man. We ain't gonna be just slaves forever. We ain't gonna be in Babylon forever, man. We trying to get that kingdom. That's why we are here storing up our treasures in heaven. We're seeking the kingdom, man. This, this place is filthy. This ain't no kingdom, man. We got trash on the floor, damn liquor bottles, damn lights. Madness going on. Bring that out. That's another curse, man. Verse 22. How long wilt thou go about, O oh, oh, oh thou backsliding daughter? I say, then that's where our people are, backsliding children, man. Go ahead. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. Say, what was that? A woman shall compass a man. What curse did the Lord put upon our people? A woman shall compass a man. 
saying you got brothers up here and they hearkening to the word, but as soon as a woman come around, then that's when they switch up, start scoffing. How you gonna talk about the uh the, the damn uh, a woman is the one that's responsible for everything? Hey brother, you got two minutes, man? I'm trying to get home. Come on, man. Come on, we trying to get brother. home too, man. This is not our rest, man. Said and this is our people. We caught up in that damn woman king spirit. <laughs> Letting them lead the home, letting them rule over you. You listen to them, man, they tell you what to do, they tell you how to move. That's a curse, man. Bring that up. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the ways of thy paths. I said the people that's been leading us been causing us to go astray. Even if you look back in the day with like Martin Luther King and stuff, man. Was like the, the brother was trying to get us to walk hand in hand with our oppressor. But by the time he realized that that was a mistake, it was too late, man. And they took him up out of here. Because they don't want to see us get together. As soon as you try to tell them that you got to separate from these people, man, they getting you up out of here. They ain't got no need for you no more. But as long as you you on that kumbaya, we going to all come together, spirit, man. They, they love you. But they don't look at you the same. That's why when you walk in, uh, in into a business, you gotta have your hood off. You can't have no hat on. The police get behind you and you tripping, you shaking. You don't know what's about to happen. These are curses, man, that are placed upon our people. Give me that in Jeremiah. Hey, give me, uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31 verse 27. Yeah. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and with the seed of beast. Verse 28, and it shall come to pass that like as I, I have watched over them to pluck up and to break down and to throw down and to destroy and to afflict, so will I watch over them to build and to plant, said the Lord. And the same way that the Lord broke us down to nothing is the same way he gonna build us back up. That's why it got us out here now, man. Getting back in order. Teaching our people that they got to repent and keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Because we got to build this temple physically before we can get the the big temple, man. So we can actually have our place of worship in peace, man. The word will be on top. We're going to be telling the, the heathens what to do, man. We'll no longer be the oppressed, but we'll be the oppressor, man. We're going to put chains upon their neck. We're going to dash their babies against the stone. But only way you're going to get that is if you're keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because Lord ain't got nothing to do with you when you're hidden in your filth right now. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah. Chapter 1 and verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over kingdoms to root out and to pour down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant. I said, and that's what the Lord does, man. He do what he want. He turned down all the nations. That's why you see all the famines going on. You see uh, all, all the wars that are building up. You see all the earthquakes that are happening. The brother brought out earlier, man, there's 37,000 people that then died over there in that earthquake, man. And the numbers are still going up. The Lord is taking them out. Cause he got he got a uh, he's got an issue with all these other nations, man. The ones that's been holding us oppressed. How you doing, sister? You doing good? Yeah. I, I talked to him. I talked to him uh, last week and talked about doing somebody everything. Oh, Definitely. Crazy. So we try to be out here every weekend. Hey sister, what's your nationality, sister? You mixed up. What, what will your father be? Um, my Watch out! Uh, we got six, six, uh, Native American Indian. Uh, his last tribe was uh, black folk. Yeah. And she's a uh, big tag. Her mom was raised by the slave master. Slave master. Her mom. I got a history. Well, lucky, lucky for you that the Lord deals with the lineage being by the father. So with your father being a Native American, you'd be from the tribe of Gad. You'd be an Israelite. You're the Lord's chosen people. That make you feel good? Yes, it does. Let, let, let's tell you what the Lord feel about his people. Give me do the wrong thing. We 
Yeah. And that's that's what we here for. We here for you. And you see how many of us walking down the street, but it's only a select amount of people that's actually gonna stop and hear this word. There right. you go. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. He did what? The Lord thy God have chosen thee. No, we asked for this. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. This is just something that we born with. The Lord chose us from the beginning. He knew us from the womb. Go ahead. To be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, we equal to everybody. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, we less than everybody else since we got to, like, go to them for all things, right? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Since we above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Ain't that a beautiful thing? Mm -hmm. But with but with knowing that we are chosen people, what does that mean, though? Yeah. Yeah. What, what would that duty be, you know? Yeah. Right. We have lost some way in there. So exactly. Say, I'm from my side. <laughs> That's what we are here teaching our people now is that they've been going astray. Give me uh, Jeremiah yeah, 17. Is. Because everybody like to say that they know God, they love God, but but it's a it's you know there's, like you said it's a duty to that. You know it's something you got to actually do. Because I can say I love you all day long, but then every time I see you, I'm like, man, here the sister come again, man. Ah, yeah. Here she go again, man. Yeah, that that's madness. That ain't that ain't showing love. If I don't, you know, if, if that ain't in sincerity, and it don't seem like I want you around, that's not love. Bring that out. Book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse four. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So, so the Lord said that we were going to lose our heritage. That's why we don't know who we are now and call ourselves Native hey, Americans. In today. Exactly. Like I was yeah, because if you leave it to the white man, they say Native American means savage. But... Right. How are we the savages when they the ones that rape, rob, and murder everywhere oh, they go? Oh, like they plunder every piece of land they go into. Yeah. Look at all the stuff that happened with like Osama bin Laden and everything. We're innocent. We're innocent. Yeah, they tried to say that they had weapons of mass destruction, but the only thing they was really doing was trying to get all their resources, go over there and take all their fuel and oil. Give me a. You got that? Come. Book of First John, chapter two, verse three. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. If we do what? If we keep his commandments. I said, so the Lord said that that's how we know him. If we keep in his commandments. Do you know any other commandments, sister? Honor thy mother and thy father. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. Our people definitely don't like to do that. That's that's one of the curses we go through. Obedience gets to my commandments and love my brothers and sisters and my neighbor and mm -hmm. love as, as, as I love you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. See, that, that's, that's, a major, yeah, that's a major law. Go ahead. Verse 4. He that said, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Is what? Is a liar. I said, so he, he said that if you say that you know him and you don't keep the commandments, then you're lying. And what else? And the truth is not in him. He said the truth ain't even in you. You know nothing about the truth. He said that basically if somebody telling you that, you can't believe nothing that come out of their mouth. Right. You know, so we actually going to go through a few uh, a few other laws if you got a moment. You got some time? Yeah. Get that out. What kind of foods you like to eat? Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to tell him I'm trying to go into the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. Eating eating the stuff that actually comes from the land is a, is a good thing for you. Yeah. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 7. Bring it up. So what kind of, do you eat any meat still? Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. I try to eat more fish than I do beef, of course. Yeah. I said uh, fish is definitely a good one. Chicken, it, chicken, chicken is good girl, for you, too. Chicken girl, like. <laughs> uh, hey, nothing, nothing wrong with that. That's our people. That's actually something we've been doing for a long time. When you read a lot of the Torah, you know, that was the way that we did a lot of sacrifices was uh, was 
it don't say chicken, chicken with the but butter. when you read it, you know with what I'm saying, with an ear to understand, yeah. you know that it, it was saying that it was mingled with flour. And you know what I'm saying, that's our people, man. Yeah. We love frying up some wings, man. Yeah, we do. Ain't, ain't nothing like it. I'm like, that's the best Super Bowl food right there. <laughs> right. Bring that up. Leviticus 11 and verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chew it not the cud. He is unclean to you. Now, do you know what swine is? Pork. Yeah, pork. It's that, that thing that they advertise everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. I was like, every time you get a burger, nine times out of ten, it's got bacon on it. Yep. What's yep. that? Cat. Yep. See, that's, that's that pig, man. But the Lord said that that animal is unclean to you. Do you know why? Yeah, everything about it is disgusting. Like the pigs, they are they are a farm animal that is just meant to clean up all the slop. So right. it'll literally eat, eat anything. We seen a video recently of a pig eating a dead body. Oh, and really? you got to think about it, you are what you eat. Yeah, I was like, it, it literally wow. eats up everything that you don't want on the farm. So when you eating that stuff, and the and the pig has no sweat glands, so everything that it, all those toxins that it eats, just stays inside of it. So when you eating that, you know that's what's making our people number one for high uh, high blood pressure, for diabetes, for gout. You know, because we eating foods that we ain't supposed to eat. Keep going on that. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall ye eat that are, so like these shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters. In the seas and in the rivers, them shall you eat. You dropped that shit. She walked off. Huh? No, like man, we gotta get back to I'm, these all sections. Oh, she back? Okay, okay. I'm still here. I just my body went pressed. The spirit was. Oh, you good? The book of Leviticus, chapter eleven and verse nine. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. I got a question. So now that you know that the Lord said they are clean, can you put that down? Yeah, I'm Is working it, on it. That a temptation you can resist? I'm working on it. You can do it, sister. Yeah. Every time you see it, you gotta look at that thing just like, ew. Yeah, God, God, yeah. God, hates, yeah, God hates that. Cause because if Christ was sitting here right now, you know, you can't just sit at his table, you know, with a with a baconator. He's gonna be upset with you, man. Right, just insulting. Yeah, yeah, you in, you insulting him. That's right. Keep going on that. The book of Leviticus chapter eleven and verse nine. These shall ye eat of all that are in the waters whatsoever have fins and scales and now you say you like fish now, what kind of fish you like jack salmon yeah salmon is good I stuff eat catfish too. yeah whiting uh-huh uh, i ain't ate both of y'all the different seafood things my family took them uh you know what I mean, from the from the well fishing and yeah. all that type of stuff you like shrimp? You like oysters? Yeah. You like mussels? I didn't, I didn't try them, but I, that's not my regular eating thing, but I yeah. eat it every now We're going to see what the Lord say about what comes out of the water that you should eat. Uh, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and the rivers, them shall ye eat. Now, what comes out of the water that has fins and scales? Fins. Yeah. I said, but some of the fish that you name don't have fins and scales. Like which one? Uh, Wh which one can you think off the top of your head is a, a popular fish that our people love to eat? Catfish. Yep. I say because because I had to think about it because but uh, catfish do have fins. They got fins, but they don't have scales. That's why he said fins and scales. Right. They gotta have I, I both of them. Yeah. I was like, because you got to think, when you try to catch a catfish, if you don't know what you're doing, that thing will pop right out of your hands because it's, it's slick. Stingy. Yeah. It's stingy, too. Yeah, I said, they nasty. But yeah. you got to look at it, the thing with uh, catfish, the same thing that's with uh, shrimp, with crab, with lobster, all those are just a pig of the pig of the ocean. Oh. All those are things that are creep around just like in the desert. Like when you look at a, uh, which one is that, uh, the, the lobster that looks like a, uh, like a scorpion. Gotcha. But yeah, we gotta put all that stuff down. I was like, cause all those things are just the bottom feeders of the ocean. They eating up all the poop, they eating the trash and everything that's in the water. That's why whenever you get like the shrimp, when you get fresh shrimp, they like and you the see that like the Yeah, when you see that uh when you see that little brown strip right down the middle, yeah. that's poop. Yeah. So that's why when you eat it and end up messing your stomach up, that's cause you you eating something that the Lord told you not to. 
keep going on that. And all that have not fans and scales in the seas and in the rivers of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. He said they should be he said it's some it's some fish like when we go down to the south, we like to get the red snapper and the and the grouper. And them things them they've got meat like a steak. Like they, oh, okay. they some pretty big fish. So it's a it's a lot of other fish that you can eat. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, other than no, the yeah, southern yeah, abomination. But I might have to try some. Hey. <laughs> you, you I want the it. I want the ice can I get yeah, hey, we can get you something before you head out. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 and verse... Let me get a couple more laws. Leviticus 11 and verse 46. Hey! This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Yeah, so that's why the Lord is saying that there's a, a list. Like, he made every single animal, so of course he knows what's good for you and what's not. Like, when you talk about, he basically saying you can eat any other cattle that you want to eat, like deer, you know, venison, you can eat buffalo, you know, you can eat the chicken like we were talking about. There's plenty of other animals that you can eat other than just the pork. But the, the, the uh, you know, the ways of America, which is spiritual Babylon, you know, they want to keep you at the bottom. So as long as they can keep you uh, sinning, then, you know, they're going to always be over us. So that's why we got to start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Because remember, God said, if you know them, then what? I'm sorry. Well, we read in First John earlier, it said, that hereby we know that we that we know God, that what? That we keep his commandments. That's right, sister. So bring that out. We're going to bring another law for you. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertained unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. See that? Satan, Satan busy, man. Keep trying to get her. And we gotta, this is why we gotta be uh, fishers of men now. We gotta get our people back in order. Bring that out again for the woman should not wear that which pertains unto a man. What do you think uh, pertains to a man that the women like to wear now? Like if you looking at the, you go in the restaurant and you look at the bathrooms. How do you know which one is a man bathroom, which one's the woman bathroom? Oh, by the feminine, by the sign. Yeah, but what's on what's on the sign that stands out the most? Uh, the genitals. I mean, I mean, I don't want to say it like that, but I'm supposed to. The, the brother gonna pull up a picture for you okay. so you can you can see. Cause there's two things as far as like a dress code that you see on them signs. That's how you know if it's a men's bathroom, if it's a women's bathroom, or if it's a family. Cause the family will have both pictures on it. Right. It has to dress. Yeah, yeah, that triangle. That's a yeah. dress, right? Yeah. I was gonna say skirt at first. It's it's the same thing, yeah. Like we we ain't telling the sisters they can't wear a t-shirt. But that's what I was meaning by this. Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. you, got you, sister. How you doing, young man? The woman should not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither should a man put on a woman's garment. I'm saying just like the the Lord is telling the, the sisters that they shouldn't hey, dress like a man. I got you. Hey brother, come right with us right quick, man. Separate from your enemies. You gotta separate from your enemies, man. They gonna pull you away to serving other gods, man. You gotta come back to the Lord, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Come back to your roots, back to your heritage, man. God, we just brought out that that we are chosen people, man. We above everybody else, but yet our people want to walk hand in hand with them, man. It's madness. You got the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse number 3 Bring it on. neither shalt thou make marriages with them thy daughters thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter thou shalt not take unto thy son for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods 
so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So the Lord is going to destroy you suddenly just because you want to get some box from a damn heathen. That's madness, man. Yeah, somebody is foreign. That's madness. <laughs> I got some Our people are the most beautiful people on the planet, man. They want to chase after rubbish. Hey, sisters, y'all know who y'all are? Man, our people don't give a damn, man. Bring that out. The book of Hosea, chapter 9, verse 7. The days of visitation are come. The days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The spiritual man is mad for the multitude of thine iniquity and the, and the great hatred. I said, man, and the day of the Lord's return is coming, man. And he, he getting pissed off with his people, man. He tired of everybody being stiff neck and rebellious. We've been this way since the beginning of time, man. Our people was arguing with Noah when he was building the ark, trying to get him in there. Our people was arguing with Moses when he tried to free him out of Egypt. Our people was angry with with uh, with Ezekiel. They was angry with Daniel. They was angry with Isaiah. They was angry with Christ, man. His own disciples was asking them stupid questions, trying to confound them, man. But he didn't, cause he chop up every wind of doctrine that they could bring, man. Bring that up. The book of Zechariah, chapter thirteen, and verse eight. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God. I said, so that's the time that we finally gonna be on one accord with Yahweh, man, by Shem Yahweh Shai. That is the one time when he actually get rid of uh, two thirds of his people that want to be hard headed, man, that want to be stiff necked, want to be rebellious, and still want to walk hand in hand with their oppressor. They still want to believe the doctrine of devils. They want to uh, walk in the ways of the people who haven't been oppressing them for hundreds of years. Bring it up. Hosea chapter 9 verse 17 My God will cast them away Because they did not hearken unto him And they shall be wanderers among nations They shall be what? They shall be wanderers among nations I said that's our people now They just wandering to and fro Walking among the nations man Celebrating it You ask them what's the day And they say oh it's Mardi Gras Well what does Mardi Gras mean And they don't even have an answer They don't know it, man, Passover is right around the corner. That's what you need to be keeping. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Is, that's what you need to be keeping. Destruction of Nicanor is coming up. That's what we need to be keeping. When we celebrate the fact that the Most High God killed off our heathens, man, through our hands, man. Our people are men of war, but instead they want to love everybody. It's madness. The whole world has is, is just been picked up, twisted around, and now everybody is just just confounded. They don't know who they are in these last days, man. You realize that we gods upon earth, then maybe they'll act different. But they don't want to hear the words of the Lord. They think that we crazy for being down here in the cold. Just walking around like, what, what is that smell? Why are they yelling at people? What is the carpet on the bottom of their shirts? Man, these things that the Lord told us to do, man. That's right! The book of Malachi to the 3 and verse 6. For I am the Lord I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. I said, the Lord don't change, man. He been speaking this from the beginning, and nothing's changed. Everybody say, oh, we in the New Testament. And they're like, no. That New Testament, only thing that is a page between Malachi and between Matthew. But you forgetting that there's 14 books in between that. They got a whole bunch of history, man. And the Lord didn't change. Yahweh didn't change. Paul didn't change. It, we still got the same word from the beginning, man. Bring that up. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profit, profited them that have been occupied therein. 
I said, so you're being occupied in every other wind of doctrine other than what the Lord said, man. Only thing you gotta do is go back to his word. Don't just take parts of, of what Paul said and just apply that. When there are so many other things that Paul said that completely combat what you're saying. Talk about salvation is for everybody, that we need to love everybody. When when Paul himself said that Jacob had love and Esau that the Lord hated, man. The Lord don't give a damn about these other nations, man. It's time to stop wanting to be like them and realize that you're better than them, man. Bring it up. No, uh, flip it to me. The book of Hosea chapter 12 and verse 2 The Lord Have also a controversy with Judah And will punish Jacob According to his ways According to his doings Will he recompense him He took his brother by the heel in the womb And by his strength he had power with God Yea He had power over the angel And prevailed He wept and made supplication unto him He found him in Bethel And there he spake with us I said, man, so he got a controversy with his people, man. The ones who has chosen people, he got a controversy with, with them, man. Because he loved us, but we like to look at the Lord like, wherein has thou loved us? He put you in slavery because you didn't listen. He let you have to go to the other nations in one of all things because you didn't serve him. He let the police gun you down in the street and put boots on your neck because you didn't serve him. So don't you think it's time to awake out of sleep? That's another thing that Paul said, but our people don't want to go through that. Bring that out. The book of Zechariah, chapter 1, verse 15. I am, it's like it, I, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. What did the Lord say? I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at, at ease. I said, and on that left hand, he pissed off with the heathen because they at ease. They sit up with their feet on the desk thinking everything all good. They go, I ain't got to pay for what my forefathers did. I ain't got to pay for what my foremothers did. I didn't do that. I don't have you in captivity. I gave you a good job. You got a house. Yeah, I gave you Juneteenth. You got something to celebrate. We gave you free weed. I mean, not free. We gave you legal weed now. Aren't you happy? No, man. We hate this place. We can't wait for it to go down. Because when your house shot come back, he going to destroy all this BS, man. Everything that you see. All the, the scat packs, these buildings, these dirty roads, the wicked music that this damn restaurant over here play week in, week out. It's all going to get destroyed, man. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Come wrap it up. Come chop it up with us right quick. Come chop it up, Brody. See that? Man, yeah, that, that too cool for school spirit, man. Give me that song. The Psalm chapter 2 and verse 8. Bring it up. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. I said, man, so if you ask the most high, he gonna give you the heathen for an inheritance, man. We gonna ransack everything that they own, and we gonna take it back, man. The same way we had to do when they ran through the temple and took all the gold, and they took all the jewels. We gonna do that back to them, man. We gonna get it back in blood on that Pushaisi spirit, man. Bring that out. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Woe well, to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. I said, and that, that's all that the heathen has, man, is the blessing of the sword. That's why they get up and they practice evil from the moment that they wake up until the time they go to sleep, man. That's why the heathen, even when we be at, at the plantation, we be having talks about food. They love talking about how their steak is bloody. They love talking about, <laughs> they love just talking about how they in rulership and the things that they have. They love bragging about the Roman Empire. They love bragging about their politics. You know, but these are things that are just keeping us docile, man. They just feeding us madness and we just gobble it up with no concerns, man. 
27. The book of Matthew chapter 19 and verse 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have taken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Yahweh shall have said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, he shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Say, what are we going to get to do? Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. What is Christ for? Judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that have forsaken houses, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Oh, Everything Lord. that we give up for forsaking this nasty, filthy, wretched land, we gonna get that and plus more, man. Nothing on earth can compare to what we gonna get in the kingdom, man. The mansions here have nothing on what we gonna get in the kingdom. The roads here have nothing on what's gonna be in the kingdom, man. Everything here it's just wicked and defiled, man. But in heaven, it's going to be... I mean, in the kingdom, man, it's going to be totally different, man. Damn, wicked. <laughs> That's the one that's pulling precepts. <laughs> Bring that out to it. Look at Judges, chapter 18, verse 9. And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Hey, brother. Hey, brother, you got What's going on, man? Again? What are you doing, brother? What are you doing, brother? What are you doing, Get brother? <laughs> Get that is out. madness. You are not safe, brother. Man, yeah, bring that out there. Bring that exit. <laughs> the exit is 915. You know? Oh, we trying to pull you out with a stretched out hand, man. <laughs> Look at Exodus chapter 9 and verse 16. And in every so like you and in very deed for this cause. Come. Look at Exodus chapter 9 and verse 15. For now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee. What is the Lord doing? That I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence. And thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power. And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Say, man, the Lord is going to kill all these people around you, man. But you put us there and walk hand in hand with them. It's madness. You see all the destruction that is going on through the world. And you want to walk with these damn dogs, man. That's madness. Finish that up. Uh, be not slothful to go and to enter to, to possess the land. Verse 10. When ye go, ye shall come, come up. Come unto a people secure and to a large land, for God has given it into your hands, a place where there is no there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there and there went from this of the Okay, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I said, so when we get the kingdom, man, we ain't gonna be in want of, of anything anymore, man. We gonna have everything that we need. We're gonna be enjoying our time with the most high, man. We no longer have to wake up early in the morning to go to a job that you hate, to have to sit there and when, when you get paid, you just giving the money right back to your presser. How y'all doing, family? Pretty good, pretty good. What, uh, what would y'all nationality be? Black. What, but black is just a color. Black. But Africa is a whole continent with 50 countries in it. So which one you come from? People destroy, man. Walking around with blind hair. That's a sign of leprosy. Man, the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 15. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. What are these people going to do? Shall fall by the sword. What is the two-thirds of blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans going to do? Shall fall by the sword. Say, man, the Lord is going to kill y'all, man, because he got a controversy with Judah and with Israel, man, because they continue to go off, even though he's sending people out to warn you on a daily basis. He got it going through the news that you got to repent and keep these commandments. But instead, y'all just want to give in to what they got going on, man. You got some left? Got it. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, and verse number 6. Slay utterly old and young, 
both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient man which were before the house. I said, so the Lord don't care if you old, he don't care if you young, he don't care if you big, if you skinny, he don't care if you tall, if you short, he gonna start slaying people left and right, man. The slaying of the Lord is gonna be from one end of the earth even unto the other, man. Bring that out. The book of Philippians, chapter one, verse 20. Bring it out. According to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be, be by life or by death. I said, so man, we got to be willing to die for the Lord, man. Hey, brother, what's your nationality? What's that? But black is the color of your coat. <laughs> man, see that? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36 and verse 6. Shoot new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm. Hey, y'all got the minute for the word? I don't know. You have a good one, though. Remember the covenant and let them that declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escape it be consumed by the rays of the fire. And let them perish that oppress the people. Right. And with that, come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Come here, Shalom. Broke it down your house. 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 God, tell to America. Ooh.